Socratic Seminar, Chapters 10 to 12, Song of Solomon, Group 2. Okay, at this point in the story, how has Milkman and Guitar's friendship changed? What factors have influenced these changes? Take in mind that they're searching for the gold now. So a factor that has um, changed is just that, I guess Milkman learned that um, his friend Guitar is in the Seventh Day um, Society or whatnot. And I think that changed his view of him. But one thing that, I, that confused me was um, when Milkman went out to search for the gold, why did he feel inclined to give um, Guitar a piece of the gold, like a piece of um, whatever he found? Could that, that, be, like, could that be symbolism for something else, maybe? Like I don't even take that as symbolism. I just think basically your friends, you've been through so much. Like basically like if me and Yamri were best friends since we've been growing up and I just became a millionaire, like I'm gonna give her some of my riches too to share it because we're like family. Like you ever saw the movie Lottery Ticket? Yeah, yeah when Bow Wow became rich, like he gave, not only did he give back to the community, but he gave back to his best friend, so yeah. Do you think it has something to do with um, the sister, First Corinthian, I think? Her relationship with um, Henry? Was it Henry? Was it Henry? Um, well, I think his name was Henry. And he was also in the Seventh Day um, Society. And maybe if he wanted to. Um, Henry was in trouble. And maybe, um, and Guitar wanted money to help bail um, Henry out. And maybe because Milkman knew that his sister had a relationship with Henry, maybe that's why he was in time. Or, but Ooh. I was interested to hear about the symbolism. Um, no, I was just asking a question. I was just wondering if anyone found any. Yeah, like, does anybody see any symbolism? I was wondering within why. Their within their relationship, now that the relationship is Yeah, I wasn't thinking about any symbolism, but I was wondering why, why, um, Guitar felt like he deserved a portion of the money because it kind of seemed like he was kind of like uh, trying to make trying to make yeah. Milkman feel guilty. Like you have you have to give me a portion because I'm part of the Seventh Day Adventists and I'm trying to help Henry or something like that. And then it also seemed like he thought that Milkman was going to try to cheat him out of the money. So I think he actually wanted to go along. With him. Maybe I don't know. Any How does Milkman's like personal identity like play a role in the friendship? Can anybody comment on how um, Milkman's personal identity plays a role in their friendship? Well, I think they're opposites. I think Milkman and Guitar are in some sense opposites because um, Milkman comes from this family that loves him despite like his indifference and he comes from this very loving family and then um, he's a mama's boy or whatnot. And, um, Guitar is this orphan who just has nobody. And I think that in this case it was opposite to Trump. Yeah, I was about to say, so we've yeah. all heard of like the saying um, yeah. or the cliche so the opposites attract. So do you guys disagree or agree that that's kind of how their friendship looks like? Agree. Do you agree? I why? Agree. I think they both were lacking something. That's why. And like and they made up for it in their friendship. Yeah. Okay, so the next question would be, um, at the beginning of chapter 10, do you believe that the story of Hansel and Gretel was a good metaphor for their desire for gold? Hmm. Yes or no? It's like the first paragraph of chapter 10. Yeah, if you go to page 239, um, they bring up the story of ha Hansel and Gretel. So do you think it was a good metaphor for their desire for gold? Or could you think of another metaphor, or could you think of another example that would best fit their desire for gold? You need an extra book. Wait, Hansel and Gretel is the brother and sister who went to the gingerbread house. Yeah. And yeah. Kind of like their yeah. surgery. Yeah. Um, oh, well, they they were searching for food, right? Yeah. Or candy. They were searching for food. In the story, Hansel and Gretel, mm -hmm. um, it's like a childhood story, and. These, this brother and sister, I guess, are wandering through the woods, I guess, sort of. And um, they come to this house, and I think it's made up of candy or something like that. Yeah. And they're like, 
little kids candy. Oh my god, I want it. So they go into the house. And it turns out like there's a witch that lives there and they try to eat them and put them in a pot. I don't know. Okay. But um that is enough. Yeah, so um do you believe that, that the story Hansel and Gretel was a good metaphor? So maybe the story was meant to allude that something bad was gonna happen, that they were going after the gold and like in like in Hansel and Gretel um, they went after the candy and then something bad happened to them. So maybe it was just trying to allude to the fact that something bad was going to happen. Yeah, and then since Toni Morrison put this in the beginning of chapter 10, do you think that that kind of was like a way of leading into mm -hmm. what was going to happen or trying to like foreshadow something that was going to happen? I think it was kind of like foreshadowing. So like, you know how when they went in the house, they finally got in the house and like they found all the candy, but then the witch, then she like eat them or something. She put them in the pot and she tried to boil them. Right. But they so ended like, up like getting out like, and killing her. Right. But in a way, like you could kind of say like the gold, the greed for the gold is kind of like the pot they were in. So like they went and then they found but it's like they were, it was a trap almost. Yeah. I don't necessarily feel like it's a trap. I just think that when you find something so wealthy that it's a lot of fake people or problems and issues that come along with it. Yeah, and like you don't see, just like yeah. in um, Hansel and Gretel, you don't see, you're blinded by the possibility of anything else. Just like they're little, she uses little kids, I think, as an example to show that um, little kids, they have a one track mind usually. And since it's like candy, when you give your little brother or sister candy, then you're like, oh, okay, okay, they'll do anything for it. Just like um, Milkman and um, Guitar, you do anything for them. You see what I'm going, right? <laughs> Does anybody else have a comment? I mean, what I was going to say is Milkman wasn't necessarily going for the riches. He was just going to, like, solve the mystery, like. But at the end, like, when you, I mean, I feel, yes, he was going to solve the mystery, but it's still in the back of his mind. Ooh, I get to find gold. Like, that's. It played a key component. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody else have any problems? He does abandon, like, his search for gold really quickly. So when he gets interested in his family history, he. He abandons the gold. And it's more of a search it's for It's more of a search for yeah. I guess that's what aggravated guitar. And that goes back to your first question. Yeah, and that goes back to our first question of where. So this play, this place a strain on their relationship. Does anybody else have a comment? No? Okay. Um, um, just a general question. Um, why do you think it's okay for both races in the book um, to, to read that to kill a black person is okay, but to kill a white person is wrong. Because they felt like black people were worthless and didn't really mean anything. And while white people are not necessarily holy, but they have power, they're more important. So that's like killing, not Obama, but killing, um, what's his name, George Bush compared to killing Obama. Do you think it would have been like a big deal? Yeah, do you think that the time frame has placed yeah. a bigger, um, I guess, I don't know, placed a bigger strain on now versus then? Because the book is in 1940, I think. So, do you think that the time frame has also played a role in that? Anyone? I think so because I mean it's all it's all racism back then like that's majority what all of, all it was about. Nowadays it's still it's still here. I mean it's still here, but like it was more open to kill black people and allowed and all that stuff back then compared to now. So. So now that we like have come up with the conclusion that racism was more out in the open then, do you think it's still do you think it's still like a major role, but it's just hidden by our society? Like How does that play a role? You mean like today or like Yeah, because um, Yama Marie brought up the point that um, racism was more out in the open and people talked about it and voiced their opinions. But do you think that it's still there to that degree, but it's just hidden by our society and how we want to view it? And I don't think it's there to that degree because there are some white people that actually like black people now in today's society. But compared to back then, I think there were more white people that just hated black people. But I think nowadays we're like getting to know each other better and we're like getting along. And we can't deny the fact that there is a bigger difference, but is it, um, is it substantial? Is it, is it enough to, um, 
do you remember what Mr. Adams said about some, I don't remember what school, he said like his daughter's high school, I think, or middle school, how they put all the black people in the um, special ed wing or whatever, oh, and they put yeah. them in, yeah. Yeah. in a Montgomery yeah. County school. White, like the white people, yeah, and all the white people were in like the IB, AP, whatever, like honors classes, and they kept all the black people, even the black teachers didn't teach honors or like they couldn't even teach honors classes at all so like it's they they do it like in a secretive way that like like it's not not everyone sees it like they still list all oh, we we accept black people but they just don't put them into those higher programs like they just accept the it's like okay white people, they give out the application to the white people first then they'll wait for like oh look there's no more space for the black people to join they're like okay whatever like they don't I think they don't have an effort. They just don't put effort in to try to make it more equal. It's just I could, um, I, could, I, I feel like it's still subliminal. Because like, in the work world, everywhere you go, when you automatically, not even just that, when you see, well, I see this on Instagram all the time, it's like these group of black boys at the top of the picture and at the bottom, it says white people be like, and the person is locking their doors. Like, it's still... There, the racism, everything. Or, st- or walking across the street. Yeah, walking across the street. I mean, I do yeah. that. When I see black people walking near me, I walk across the street. So, I mean, it, it's not a race <laughs> thing. It's just like, it's always like black people are bad. They're not good. Even when... Um, it's a reputation. Yes, and also like, if, if a black person and a white person were like... They had the same degree of education and all that stuff, but the white person was the manager. Let's be real. You know that the white person is going to choose another white person. It's still, it's not as open, but it's still in the back of our mind that white people have the higher power, and we usually have to reach their goals and their expectations to try to be on the same level as them, but they always feel like they're better than us. Not everybody, but... It's still, it's still kind of there. But going back to what you said, or the Shaman case said, but like when the black guy is like in front of you, you walk across the street. Yeah. Doesn't it also think of parents? You see a guy, a black guy in a suit. I don't think you'll walk across the street, but you see yeah. three gangsters looking yeah. guy. You walk across the street because I see a black guy walking still. Like I just walk straight past. Mm-hmm. I see three of them walk by. Running across the street. I'm not walking across the street. I'm running across. The street. <laughs> 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 but if I see, but like if you have seen the T.O.K. video about the um. The TED video about the Nigerian girl, oh, yeah. how she was thinking that all the white people were um, killers and all that stuff. If I seen a white male in an all black um, outfit, suit, whatever, whatever you think of when you see a serial killer, it's all about like perception. That, walking down the street, like I would, I would walk across the street also. Like it's, it's like when I see that boy in the library with that umbrella thing in his back with his sunglasses. I think he's gonna kill us all. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, even. Like ninth grade year, Miss Swift was telling us how this guy used to wear this long black coat. Uh, used to wear all black before they used to wear a uniform, and he would come. Like everybody was scared he would do something. It's all like, it's all that reputation and the mentality of when you see that certain person or that certain look. So we've come to the conclusion that okay. So I think that um, like saying it in today, like it's still here today. Like I'm agreeing with what y'all saying, but I think it's more dispersed because there's so much more diversity now. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not just black and white. Yeah. It's black, white, Asian, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's so, like, instead of being just black and white, it's it's the same level. Maybe not the same level, but it's still there. It's just spread out. So, like, we were doing the perception. When the guy came in, he was like, okay, Spanish. Uh, what's the first thing you think of? Como malon? Like, it's... It's still like, no, no, we didn't see okay, and we did the thing with the name. Yeah, with the last name. So it's the same thing, like, not that it's discrimination, like, it's hate crimes and stuff going on, but it's all in, I feel like, that's just how society goes And in that time, they didn't have that same perception, like, it was just that, and that was all right. Um, The second part of the question was, why do you think um, black people were okay with being discriminated? Do you think Mm -hmm. that... um, Going back to earlier chapters, but not to say that earlier time. chapters, um, like how they did not Doctor Street and all that. Do you think that that would play a role in it? And then that foreshadowed how um, the black people were sort of just going to give into just letting the white people take them over, not take them over in a sense, but. Like I mean, after a while, you get so used to it. It's like saying like a bully that always bullies a person and person just gets so used to it, like they don't, they won't stand up unless someone comes up to them and say, you know, there's something wrong, but like you shouldn't let a person, like, be on top of you that way, and so it just continues to, like, you just continue to observe everything, and you just let it 
um, hit you like that. So maybe that's why they just feel that way because they're they're so used to it. It's just been so many years and they haven't done anything. Like no one has done anything just to stop the idea that white people are going to take over anything like that. And so you know, those long years has you know years has gone through and then people have finally stood up and said that. And you know, people like white people finally you know see that black people are not that. Kind of so it just takes time. Went to what she said. What do you think takes for change? What, what measures um, have to be there? Leadership. Well, well, regarding this subject in particular, you have to understand the fact that these people are coming from a place where they don't have any self worth. And they're coming from a place of being enslaved for many hundreds of years and being brought here against their will. So they're already coming here with the mentality that they're not worth what the other people are worth. So even when they're freed, even when they came out and had their, you know, their liberties to some extent, they didn't feel as though they were still worth the same, I guess, value as the white man. So you have to understand that it takes time to develop self-worth. It takes time to develop love for yourself in general when so many hundreds of years and generation after generation you've been beat to think that you're not worth anything. All you do is work for me. And that takes time to change. And you have, you know, people that revolt and people that, you know, try to give different ideas. But as a majority, so many people were tarnished. Their ideas and of, of their whole beliefs and their whole cultures were demolished because they were just supposed to just, what is it called? Just surrender who they were and were enslaved. And like, you, you can't, that doesn't take, that doesn't take tomorrow. Like, if you were freed tomorrow, that doesn't mean they're going to, you know, revolt and do this thing. Also, you have to understand that they're, we're still the minority. I think there's like 40% Caucasian in this country and only like 13 or 14% African American. So it's still a very little number of us. It's not like, I mean, we all congregate in the same area, yeah, but it's a very, the United States is very big and there's a lot of white people. So you have to also understand that there's very little numbers for things to actually change. And also you have to take into fact education. They didn't have that at all. I mean, there were certain individuals like you see doctors from Doctor Street and stuff like that, but in majority, they did not have education. So how could you change things legislatively if you don't even know how to read? And also I think fear lives in the hearts of majority of people. So like if you take that upper hand or take that leadership, you like you still you still have fear of the consequences that you will face, the thing the brutal things that they will do to you. I forgot what I was gonna say. Um can you repeat the question? Oh, so I said um wait, what was the question? Oh what measures does it take for change? Oh, well, actually, while Ashanti was speaking, I was thinking pretty much the exact same thing. I think that someone has to have, like, the place, like, the position to actually make a change. So they have to have a certain status, basically. It's like a mentality. Yeah, it's like you have to build up to that, you have, like, you have to build up to that status. But it doesn't just come in the day. And especially for black people back then, it was hard to get that status, like, I guess the doctors and stuff, like they could influence that because they're closer to, I guess, the white people's status because in comparison to their riches and everything. So they could have some sort of influence and then probably begin that change. So that time. So you, you said um, social status has to do, right? Making that, we see him as like acting as a white person and he has, Social, uh, uh, social status, he's really high. Couldn't he influence change? But he doesn't want to, right? Because he's the he, he wants to put them down. He wants his people to be down, right? Well, well, I remember when he remember when they were in the car ride, and then they were going up to that place, and then he, uh, they were like, "Oh, why are we here?" And then he was like, "Oh, well, I, well I'm going to try and buy these beach houses so that he could sell them to black people." I don't think he's necessarily trying to put black people down. Maybe he's. Well, yeah, I think he's trying to build them up. Build them up. But he's doing. He's, 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 he's not. He's annoyed with yeah. them being that yeah. way, how they are. He's just not making it evident. Like he, he's also the persona that um, he doesn't want to help them, but secretly he is. Right? Yeah. Do you agree with that? Um, did you guys find anything odd about the text or puzzling? Something you were confused about? Something that you found striking, like oh, I have a question. Do you guys think that Guitar and Milkman's friendship was genuine? Was what? Genuine. Was it like genuine? I felt like Guitar wanted something. What from the start? That's what I felt like. 
there was always a secret agenda with the guitar. I, don't, I wouldn't see them as actually being friends if they just didn't want anything from each other. Are you about to wrap up? Um, so, does anybody have any questions about the text? Or something you want answered, something you didn't understand? So I have another question. Um, um, what I want to know your opinions on something that the fathers believed on page two fifty seven. The um, the book says that they were dumb enough you know, to believe that if they kill one man, they kill his whole line, like his whole generation or future generations. What do you guys really think about it? I think that's true unless he has children or like other relatives. But if that's the end of his generation like that like he hasn't had the chance to continue or have other people that's it that I don't understand the question yeah yeah kill one man you kill a generation like, oh, no. like so his line like his family line because oh, right. if you use the example of um, making dead and milkman um making dead senior was murdered for his land and then that affected making Dead's personality. And then that personality went into Milkman's personality. And they created a line of like indifferent, harsh people until Milkman was able to go back and um, discover his real family history. Yeah. How do you guys think the story would be different if uh, the doctor was killed by the KKK? If he got killed by what? Um, my wife's premises? The doctor from the hot doctor. Doc Foster? Do you think it would have changed the dynamic of the book? I still don't get the question. If who was killed by who? You know the doctor that they named Dr. Street after? Yeah. His name is Dr. Foster. Yeah, Dr. Foster. If the Ku Klux Klan killed him. How would that affect, like, the dynamic of the neighborhood? Everyone would go right. No, first of all, I don't, Ruth is the daughter's name. Yeah. Yeah. Ruth, I don't even think she would be acting the way she would act, which would affect Macon's personality. Like, he wouldn't be acting as though he's high up in status also because it's like you're trying so hard to be like the white man, and you know at the end of the day you're not the white man because you're black as night, and, like... I, so I don't know, but it's like the way that they yeah, because they wouldn't be acting. They would, they would know their place basically. Because right now they don't know their place. They think they're high above everybody else. So do you think the whole purpose of the book would have been? Yeah, it would have been shattered. There would be no purpose of the book. So that was so Toni Morrison's per, um, portrayal of the doctor actually played a really big component. Because without, without it, the book was yeah. Yeah. Like Tom said, without his presence, nobody else would know their place, like where they stand. But then, um, Rudy still gave, like he still gave the part of Bob, I guess, he had to his daughter. So I, I still think it would be the same. But I think it would be the same one. Like I said. I think it would be like riots and revolts. I mean, I understand that, but I'm just saying, like her, like Ruth personally, I don't think she would change. She what were you going to say? I was wondering whether they would still actually bother to fight for not doctor for Doctor Street. Yeah, they would last. probably put up more of a fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because probably. you know if something happens by an opposing team, you tend yeah. to like, revolt. Do you think? Do you think? Do you think that would have actually happened? I mean, if that if it's Doctor possible. Street was the thing that they they gave hope to them, there was like, oh, there's actually someone who strive to be more, who got professional, and then they kill him, what does that say about them? Wait. Who two are lower, they're like, oh, if they kill him, then that means I have no place in the world. If he was actually something more than me, and they killed him, then they, I think it would have killed their hopes as well. I look at it like this. If you have a, um, let's say, your mom, and they kill your mom or something like that. You want to protect it no matter what. Just like they want to protect their street. They wouldn't want to just give up on it. It gives you hope, I think. It gives you, like, it, it makes you want to fight even harder. I think that they would have tried to defend and go on and, like, work harder to defend it rather than just give up on it. Um, so After being oppressed for so many years, I don't think they would have reacted to that. All right, well.
Okay, that goes back to the movie we were seeing, though. That goes back to the movie that we were seeing. Like you saw that the parents they had witnessed more than the more than the young people, and the the parents wouldn't stand up because they knew the consequences. So, like, do you think do you think they would have done something just because a doctor was killed, a doctor who didn't even like them? He didn't even like. Them. <laughs> he was very arrogant. He was I like, oh, I ha I buy flowers to. To show off my wealth, but they were starving, they couldn't even pay the rent. I mean, what mess so. <laughs> <All right. laughs> What if they did, but even, if, even though he didn't like them, they still looked up to him, so that meant something. Yeah, they looked up to him, but if he was killed, then who would they look up to? They would have just right. gone back to the suppression to the suppression they, they were in the first place. I right. think that That's was nice. the chance oh. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> that, that, that has been our nice. psychotic. No, we we're not done. That has been our Socratic seminar. Bye, Mr. Adams.